Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about the Snyder Cut, uh, changes that have already happened in the Snyder Cut, specifically the, the announcement of $30 million and up on the price tag, and the return of Henry Cavill. Um, so, yeah, and, and what this means for American politics, right? So, specifically... What should the American government respond to this? Right? Because, uh, well, and we'll talk about why. All right. So this is my third video on the Snyder Cut. And the reason why I continue to talk about it is I think it is a, a hinge in American history. I think uh, specifically in, a, in American history, period. <laughs> so the reason why it, it is a hinge in American history is it is the dawn of a major change in a major industry. So I believe that American entertainment, uh, one of the outputs of American entertainment is American celebrity, and I think American celebrity is the most powerful force in the world. I think you can accomplish things with American celebrity that you cannot comp accomplish with money. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and like, and well, here's the thing. You can win the U.S. presidency with American celebrity and not even good American celebrity, right? Donald Trump wasn't a good American celebrity. Like, he had a cruft show. Like, it wasn't even that great. It was a very marginal show. But he was the first to realize, you know, you know what? American celebrity is a new currency. I'm going to pay with it, right? Like, and the fact, and because he was the first to really use American celebrity like a currency, uh, he really, he cashed in at a level nobody even thought was possible, right? And I honestly think that going forward, it may be impossible to win for any schmuck like uh, politician, American politician to win. Uh, so one, you if you are an American politician and you want to win the presidency, you're going to have to make yourself into an American celebrity as well. I think that we're still in a zone where um, American politicians can make themselves into American celebrities if they play their cards exactly right. Perfect example of this is uh, AOC, right? She's a shiny person. She has, uh, she, and she, she plays the game like a celebrity. And she is a politician who is making herself into a celebrity. But generally, I think, you know, uh, American celebrities are going to be able to waltz in uh, into the U.S. presidential races going forward. And the reason why is all the rules are gone, right? Uh, by the way, when you're choosing what laws you're going to, what laws the nation will follow, you sure as heck aren't going to pay any attention to rules, right? <laughs> But so, like, that, that's that's a new reality, right? It, and it's really shocking. I, I don't think anybody saw this coming. This is a big deal. It's a major, major change, right? So, uh, so American celebrity is incredibly powerful. The Snyder Cut is a massive change in American politics. It's the death of a few things and the, the birth of a few others. So what is the, it the death of? It's the death of a definitive end to any movie, right? Going forward, uh, if, you're a, if you're a director and you made a movie, who cares? Five other people can make that other movie, can make that movie. Joss Whedon made Justice League. Who cares? We're going to watch Snyder's Cut for now, right? And, it, and, like, the Snyder Cut breaks a lot of rules. It really makes some massive, massive changes that we've never seen in entertainment before. So what are some of those changes? Well, one of the things we're seeing is right now, Warner Brothers is like, uh, so they have had tremendous success and they have absolutely won every news cycle with the Snyder Cut, right? Which they wanted to do because they wanna, they wanna launch this HBO Max with some juice, right? We want They want people to care about HBO Max and they need to because Disney Plus came out of the gate swinging, right? Paramount came out of the gate. Uh, Paramount came out of the gate with a streaming service that absolutely nobody cares about. CBS has a streaming service; nobody cares about it, right? There's only really three major streaming services right now, and that's that matter. That's Amazon, that's Netflix, and that's Disney Plus. That's it. That's all. That's all that matters, right? Like that's that's really all anybody cares about, okay? So it's important to understand that and recognize that, okay? So HBO Max is pinning their future on this, this Snyder Cut, right? 
But in order to do this, Warner Brother has to say, this is, and this is pretty unprecedented. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That first Justice League movie, what a worthless piece of junk that was. And Joss Whedon doesn't know what he's doing. And that's why we're going to give you the version of this movie that you begged for. And frankly, we are inviting you to tell us that any of the movies we made are pure crap and you'd like a new version of it, right? That's, that is new. That has never been done before. And people are jumping right on board, right? One of the things is there's the, there's the cry for the air cut right now for the, uh, specifically for Suicide Squad. And, you know, fans are like, hey, Suicide Squad was terrible too. It was a piece of junk movie that nobody liked, but we can hack it apart, right? And, and, and pretend that there's a better version. And frankly, all we have to do to get a better version is pretend there's a better version. The version doesn't need to be real. We just need to give it a tag. And then we get 20, 30, 40 million dollars uh, to make this new, this new cut a reality. And with 30, 40 million dollars and with the, with the internet saying every single mistake that was made in the first movie, maybe there's a chance of making the movie decent, right? This is a completely new business model. This has never, ever happened. We've never been in a situation where studios are like, yes, fans, our movies stink. And we invite you to tell us to recut them and give you fresh new versions of them and reserve up uh, the second serving, you know, like, uh, so it's really, uh, pretty incredible. Like, I'm just like, wow, you know, it is really, really an incredible change. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm fat, I'm absolutely flabbergasted, um, that, you know, that, uh, that this is happening. So it truly is incredible. And look at the momentum that even the announcement of the Snyder Cup has. It one, the budget was originally reported at 15 to 20 million dollars. Uh, a Warner Brothers executive just said, We're gonna be lucky to pay to get this done for 30 million. That almost guarantees reshoots because guess what? You don't need 30 million dollars for snip, 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 right? That, that means you're almost certainly gonna have reshoots, right? And who's gonna be involved in the reshoots? Well, for one, there's a really good chance it was announced just today. Henry Cavill is coming back, right? Now, who's it announced by? Oh, that's a good question. It really wasn't announced by Warner Brothers, but it was announced by majorly uh, reliable news sources, right? Now, you know, of course, there's a big question now on what a reliable news source is, but about as reliable as you could get, right? It was it was pretty significant, right? So uh, Henry Cavill's coming back, and that means there's a good chance he's going to do reshoots for for the Snyder Cut, right? Well, as soon as you got, so so get this, right? What does that, Cavill coming back is huge, because one, he plays Superman, right? That ain't no small chunk of change, chunk of change. that is a big deal, right? Because Superman is really critical to the DC, DC Comics isn't DC Comics, without Batman and without Superman. Superman is absolutely critical to DC Comics. You can, you can do a lot with DC Comics, but not if you don't have Superman in the world. Arguably, you're not even playing with this with the DC world if you don't have Superman in the mix. It's really critical, right? So yeah, so it's you know it's it's really um, a pretty significant change, right? So, but also, what does that mean? With Henry Cavill back, you have you have Snyder cut Superman. You have Gal Gadot. She's on board. She wants to make more movies, right? You got Jason Momoa. He ain't going anywhere, right? Nothing he touches do, uh, does very well, except Aquaman made a billion dollars, right? So he's on board, right? So that means you got Gal, you got, you got billion dollar Jason Momoa Aquaman. You got Wonder Woman Gal Gadot, who everybody loved. You got Henry Cavill, who people were on the fence about, but now they're like, yeah, I want all, I want this back. Oh wait, all you're missing, all you're missing, is uh. Is Batman, Batfleck specifically, Ben Affleck as Batman. If they bring him back, that means you got everybody you need to make a Justice League 2, right? And everybody wants that. Well, what do you need to get to a Justice League 2? Well, you gotta kill the current Bat Pat, Robert Pattinson as the Batman. You gotta make sure that movie never airs, right? And the reason why is it's going to be confusing. 
Also, you can't put Robert Pattinson with Jason Momoa, Gal Gadot, and Henry Cavill because everybody's like, uh, why do you look 20 years younger than Batfleck? It'll be confusing, right? So the point is, Snyder Cut is not important to superhero movies. Snyder Cut is not important to movies overall, right? I think you are not you are not seeing the rise of a new type of movie. You are seeing a massive, massive change to the point where what you're really looking at is you are looking at a new overall uh, redo culture, right? Whereas if the masses don't like about like something, if they aggressively complain about it on Twitter, right, then they're going to get what they want. Period. Right, and and this is huge. This is huge. This is going to go way beyond superhero movies. This is going to go way beyond movies. I think this is going to be people are people are building their own time machine. That's what the Snyder Cut really represents. It is a time machine to allow you to pull something from the past, make it better, make it now in the future. Hopefully, make it better. Uh, actually, it'll be better. Like it's not it's not hard to make a better movie three years later with all the ideas from the internet that you could just scoop up for free, right? Um, for, because they talked about it, you know, ad nauseum on the internet and gave you all the best ways to finish the film, right? And with astronomically better uh, CGI, right? So it's going to be able, they're going to be able to make this movie better. And once people see this in, in movies, they're going to be like, oh, I want this for everything, right? Including president, right? I think, boy, I'll tell you, people are going to use impeachment like like a flathead screwdriver. It's going to be for every president. It's going to be like, uh, when's my impeachment coming? Is it year one, year four? Um, no, it's coming. And trust and believe, it will come, right? It'll be, it'll be every president now. Impeachment will, will be essentially meaningless. Ooh, that's a little dangerous. It is really fascinating. So I'm convinced. Uh, so the big changes now with the Snyder Cut is Warner Brothers is saying they're going to drop $30, $40 million on this thing. And it's just a snippety snip edit, right, with some reshoots, right? But it also is going to allow them to pick something that was thrown in the trash, Justice League, by the entire society, and everybody said, oh, that was a bad movie, and make it into something that's gold, and that means you can relaunch a series. That is a time machine if one ever existed, right? And that will change society. How should the U.S. government respond to this? Well, one thing is they should realize that they have an industry that is about to be massively fluctuating, right? And just like we track the price of corn, the price of oil, and the price of steel, we need some experts who are going to have some real metrics on the entertainment industry. And I want a briefing for the U.S. presidency, a president every day to determine what the government should do to stabilize the entertainment industry. That's what we need to do. We need it watched, measured, and the, and the American government needs to be able to react to massive fluctuations in the entertainment industry because the Snyder Cut is going to create massive fluctuations in the entertainment industry. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.